Okay, now the Sabbath. Got about three things more to do here with the Sabbath. Why do we keep nine out of the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not do murder, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal. We observe all the commandments, but how come we don't do the commandments of Sabbath? And you say, what's that have to do with Wisconsin roads? I grew up in New York, and in New York, they have potholes that are so big, they will like eat your car. Actually, most roads, in like roads in Massachusetts, have potholes. In New York, the potholes have roads. Okay, you know, it's, it's like, anyways, you get, into, you get into Wisconsin, though. In Wisconsin, the roads are like glass. And I was like, what's the difference? And part of it was the way that Wisconsin builds their roads. They tile the water out from underneath it. They put a bunch of crushed rock on so the water is able to escape. And they make their roads with a good base. And that good base then makes it so the roads last well and don't do that. What I'm going to suggest to you is the Sabbath principle is a good base to set your life on. Now, I'm talking hypocritically here. And this is a lecture as much to myself as it is to anybody because I've had a real hard time with the Sabbath thing. I've got some friends that are very Sabbath-oriented and other people that work just seven days straight. Sabbath principle. One of the things that Sabbath is that you remember, you remember what God has done, okay, that you reflect on life. What happens when you're just trucking through life, just running, running, running as fast as you can, and you never turn around? Can you make sense out of life? Do you need to turn around and take time to bring life together? And that remembering, that remembering of your past in order to make the present have make sense. And so remembering is a really important principle that's involved with this. Rhythm. Uh, you guys know about rhythm. What happens, uh, you got to write a paper for class, and so you stay up all night writing the paper. You, you violate the day-night rhythm. You violate it by you stay up all night. Question, what happens the next day? Is the next day good or bad? Next day bad, okay. What happens if you have to stay up two nights in a row? Is that like murder? Don't do that, but it's just, it's, it gets really bad, okay. So in other words, is there a certain daily cycle that you need to observe? And actually, as college students, I, I just tell you, try to, try to get your sleep, okay. It's really important stuff. But anyway, there's daily cycles, as there are also apparently weekly cycles. What happens if you violate the weekly cycle? I used to work with a guy, and, and he, we... He worked seven days a week, and he would drive truck. He would go to college. He was actually one of my students. I'd see him in school, stuff. And then on the weekends, he would drive truck, and he would work like 30 hours over the weekend driving truck and things like that. And after a while, he'd go to school, work, then go to work. Go to school, then go to work. Go to school. Never took a break. Just like totally ate out like that. Question, after about three months of doing that, did he know which end was up, or was he just running? You know, he lost all sense of meaning and purpose in life and things. And he was ready to quit everything because he just couldn't make sense of things. So be careful about that. Renunciation of work is your master. Work is not our master. Work is not our master. And so on the Sabbath, it breaks that cycle of work and renounces work as our master. Refreshment. You need to take a break sometimes in the Sabbath. Uh, my parents, when I grew up, they would always rest on the Sunday and things like that. And there's something to be said for that now. And um, so refreshment. Here's another one, role model. Did God himself rest on the Sabbath? Did God rest because he was tired? No. No, no God rested on the Sabbath. He, he looks at everything that he has made and sees that it's very good, tov meod. Okay, so God rested and God is our model. And so there's something to be said for that as well as it being one of the Ten Commandments. Do we need to reevaluate? Do we need time to reevaluate and rethink things? And then lastly, I think, whoops, I go back here. Um, okay, so this is basically some of the reasons for, for doing a Sabbath. Now, by the way, does the New Testament tell us that we must obey the Sabbath? And Paul, in Romans, says that some people observe the Sabbath, other people do not consider every day alike. And so what I'm saying is you, can't, you can make a commitment for yourself, but be careful about you know, forcing other people into those kind of commitments and things. So be careful about that. Now, the tabernacle. What do we know about the tabernacle? The tabernacle, this is the major verse with this. Then have them make me a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. This I will dwell among them, what name of God does this trigger in your head? Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us, that I will dwell among them. Israel is in the desert, and they are do where are the Israelites living in the deserts? They're living in what? Tents. If God is with Israelite in the desert, where does God live? In a tent. And so I see this where the Israelites are living in a tent in the desert. 
God is living in a tent with them. Now, some people that are good friends of mine say that the tabernacle has this notion of the tabernacle and the holy of holies with the cherubim and stuff, that this is heaven on earth. That in other words, the tabernacle is kind of like a little bit of heaven on earth because of the cherubim and stuff. And then other friends of mine say that, this, that the tabernacle symbolizes this return to the Garden of Eden. Now, both of these suggestions, I, I've never been able to get off on these suggestions. These suggestions are made by some people that I very much respect, but I, they have never made much sense to me out of the tabernacle. What makes more sense to me, the tabernacle is a tent, and God is tenting with his people. That seems to make more sense than this heaven on earth thing and this other one for me, but, but some people you'll see that will go this direction. Now, more, so for me, more it's t God tenting with his people. Now, I'm going to put up a drawing of the tabernacle. Is this on your PowerPoints that you guys can download? Okay, and here's, here's a drawing of the tabernacle. And let's just kind of walk through this. Uh, first of all, and Kyle, I'm going to walk over to the other side here. First of all, let's get, let's get the size of this thing. First of all, the whole tabernacle is 150 feet long by 75 feet wide. How long is that? 170, 150 feet. How many yards? 150 feet is how many yards? 50. Okay, it's 50 yards. What's 50 yards that you know pretty well? Is that like half a football field? Okay, so it's half a football field. Is this huge? Yes. Okay, it's half a football field. Is it about as wide as a soccer field? But now that's the outer court. The inner side, the inner tabernacle itself is 45 feet by 15. 45 feet by 15, could that about fit in this room? Is this room from here to the wall, is that about 40 feet probably, 45 feet maybe from here to the wall? And 15 feet, is this room wider than 15 feet between the two pillars, wider? So the tabernacle, this building here, or this actually it's a tent, is, it could fit right in here. All I'm saying is, is this huge? No, it's not, okay? Now, when you come in, what direction do you come in from? The east, which means your back is facing the what? Okay. Actually, you're coming, in to the, you're coming in from the east, which means your back is to the west. Your back is to the setting sun. Okay, is the sun a problem for gods in that culture? Okay, now, where are the tribes of Israel? Three tribes on this side, three tribes on that side, three tribes on this side, three tribes. Are the tribes camped around this? Three tribes on each side. When you come, you come in from the east, and you drop your sacrifice off, who picks up your sacrifice right here and kills the animal? The priests. So the, the priests operate in here. So the priest takes you, bring your animal here, your sheep or goat, you bring it here, the priest takes it, the priest then kills it and burns it on this altar of burnt offering. This is about seven and a half feet long and things, and they burn the animals up here, okay? So the animal's burnt here. Now, by the way, when you slay an animal, is there gonna be blood? Blood. So this is a laver. A laver looks like a bird bath. That, I'm sorry, but it actually does. It's a, like a bird bath. It's about this high, about this big around, and this is water. This has water in here. Why would the priests need water at this point? They just, yeah, they got messed up with the clean, you know, blood and stuff with this, so they wash up here. So this is the laver and the burnt offering out here. Now, when you go in here, you basically have this, and I'm sorry, this is a terrible drawing. This is what the Jewish people call a menorah, okay, a menorah. A menorah is a seven, a seven branch candle thing. Have you ever seen those Jewish ones with the seven branches? This is, it's a lampstand. Why do you need a lampstand inside this tent? Because it gets dark in there. So this is the menorah, the lampstand. This is the table of showbread here. This is like a, a coffee table. Do you know coffee table? Low, this big, by this big. And on this coffee table is a showbread, 12 loaves of bread. How many tribes are there? 12 tribes, 12 loaves of bread. This is the incense altar. The incense altar is six inches by six inches, about this big, probably about this tall. And on this, they burn a special incense that God said had to be mixed in a special way, this special incense. When you came in by the tabernacle, did you know that you were in God's presence by the, way, by the fragrance that you smelled? Is fragrance or odor and presence, do those go together? Can you tell you're in someone's presence sometimes by the way things smell? And, and I, that's, I put it in a bad way, but, but in other words, what God's saying is here, does, 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 does smell trigger presence? 
Yes, and so you get even the, the odors that are here, fragrances, I should say. Okay, now here is the, there's a curtain that goes across here, and this is the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies meaning the most holy place. There's an ark there. The ark is about this big, by this big, by this big. So it's about this big. On top of the ark is what? The cherubim, okay, there's two cherubim, and where does the blood get put once a year? The priest goes in here on what day and puts the blood on the, on between the cherubim? Does anybody remember that from the Day of Atonement? The Day of Atonement, most sacred day. Yom Kippur, if I said Yom Kippur, does that sound familiar? On Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, they bring the blood and put it on there. And so this is the ark. They carry the ark on their shoulders as they walk on these staves and things, and they carry it. And then three things are in the ark. And this should sound like a multiple choice question to you. Three things that are in the ark. The Ten Commandments are in the ark. Aaron's budding rod. Aaron was to be the leader. If his rod budded, his rod budded. They took Aaron's budding rod, put it in the, in the, in the ark. And then they took a pot of manna. They, got a, they gathered up some manna and put a pot of manna in there. By the way, what does the word manna mean? What is it? Do you see there's a kind of a play on words here with mana? Mana means what is it? They didn't know what it was, so they called it, what is it? And so these three things then are found in the ark. Later on in Israel's history, these two things will be gone, and the only thing that will be left in it later on will be the Ten Commandments. And so these two things are lost, and then the Ten Commandments only in the, in the ark and things. So that's the tabernacle. We got a test on Thursday, and that last question, I had one more slide to go, but I'm not going to do it. This slide here, uh, we, we won't, this won't be on it, okay? So don't worry about this uh, question on abortion and things like that. So.